तौफीक ताहिद हिम्मत व यारी तौफीक ताहिद हिम्मत व यारी या मौलाए जमान या मौलाए जमान प्लीज स्टे विद अस स्टे क्लोज टू अस सो वी कैन टीच एंड लर्न दी ट्रू मीनिंग ऑफ आवर होली दुआ and understand the conversation that we have with you on daily basis so we can understand the batin of our dua and batin of our tariqa let's come to part 6 and inshallah we should be able to finish this really quickly part 6 we have a sura sura number 112 sura ikhlas in our dua part 6 kullu wallahu ahad allahu samad lam yulad wa lam yulad wa lam yu akulluhu kufuwan ahad now this sura only has four ayat is called the sura of the truth and then we see this sura is put at the end of the dua in the sixth part we start with sura fatiha and we end with sura ikhlas those of you who like to read the history and who no understand the principle of the namaz principle of the dua the essence of the dua no dua can be completed no dua can be completed without surah alhamd and without surah truth surah ikhlas in every namaz in every dua this two surahs are always and always present so let's come to our six part surah ikhlas and this surah is surah number 112 which has only four ayat So we start with saying Allah is one. Allah is one. When in our tariqa, in our teaching, in our understanding, how many times do we call our Imam Ali Allah? How many times we say Ya Mola, our sajda, our prostration, our trust? our itaat is for you are we mixing up to god are we calling that there is god and then there is a god how do we understand this part kullu wallahu had when throughout the dua from the first part to the fifth part we talked about how all our trust all our prostration everything is for the imam e zaman and now we are talking about kullu lawad there are two school of thought one when we say kullu lawad and we are not talking about ali allah then we are talking about noor e mujarrad if anybody wanted to write it down is a hard word noor e mujarrad the abstract noor the noor which we cannot see we cannot reach we cannot understand is above our comprehension and about any thoughts 
in attribution that we relate to him. Allah Husamad. He is above all else. He is above all else. He is absolute. So when we are talking about the Noor, the Kullu Walao Ahad, the One, and here is not one, meaning there is one, two, and three, the Yak, the only one. Nure Mujarat, abstract Noor. So when we are talking about Noor, the Noor is one and one only. But when we are talking about Nure Mujassam, embodied Noor, Imam Zaman, remember our concept must be pure, absolute pure. And that is the Imam Zaman the Imam Barhak is the Imam Noor Mujassam, Imam embodied Noor. It is not the body, the physical body of the Imam that we prostrate to. When we say Ali Allah, we are talking about the Noor Allah. The noor e mujarrad abstract noor within the body, within the imam. Where does he say that Allah's noor is in imam? Where does he say that? Wa kulli shayin senawfi imam e mubin. Everything. Everything, including Allah's Noor, is in Imam. Am I saying that? No. It is from the Quran. Surah Yasin, ayat number 12. وَكُلَّ شَيْنْ أَسْتَنَا فِي إِمَامِ مُبِينَ Everything is in Imam, including Noor-e Ilahi, Noor-e Mujarrad, abstract noor is in imam so when we say that imam is ali allah our understanding should be it is the noor not the body it is the noor it is the noor embodied noor imam is zaman so now if you go and say kullu alawhad we are talking about the oneness, the oneness of the Noor. Islam and all the other religion is a monotheistic religion. Believer of Yak Khuda, the oneness of Allah. But when we come to Ismaili Tariqa, our Imam, Imam Aka Sultan Muhammad Shah, may our soul be sacrificed to their Imam had given us yet hakiki concept of mono reality the oneness of God so when we say kullu walauhad we are not talking about just nur mujarrad but we are talking about us all of us are one in the imam zaman with the principle of Wakulla Shain Asenaufi Imam Mubin and therefore we are all one in the single soul Nafsun Wahida Surah four ayat number one we are all one with Imam. So now when we say Kullu Allahad we are not only talking about Allah we are not only talking about Noor, we are not only talking about Imam, but we are talking about the oneness, oneness of the Imam is Zaman, where Allah's Noor 
and our souls are one in Imam. The concept should be Kullu Walawahad Oneness Mono Reality. Then second ayat that he is absolute Allah Samad. Think look at the word he is absolute. Nothing is outside him. Nothing is outside him. There are two different terms the oneness and manifestation an example all of you remember the example of the sun when the daylight breaks all of the sun rays come down on the earth but they are still connected and absolutely part of the sun never disconnected is one with it Imam is the sun the Noor in the Imam the soul of the Imam is one and we are all connected to him as the sun ray manifestation of that one single soul that one noor -e ilahi in the imam -e zaman in the monotheistic way of thinking there is one problem and that is Allah is one and we have no connection whatsoever the example of the cloud and the rain once the rain the water leaves the cloud and comes down on the earth there is no connection completely disconnection from the cloud that is not our tariqa imam at the level of haqiqat not in shariat in shariat kullu allah is one and we are completely disconnected but at the level of haqiqat imam has taught us he has shown us the truth and the truth is that we are from Nafsun Waida, we are from the one single soul the one single soul of the Imam never ever disconnected we are always and always and always with the Imam so in one place we see ourselves on the earth away from the body of the Imam but when it comes to the soul when it, physical body yeah Imam the Kareem Aga Khan and then whatever your name is but when it comes to the soul we are never disconnected from the Asal from the root from the essence from the Nafsun Wahida. We are always one. Now the next two part that no one is born from him and he, he has not given birth to anyone. That's easy, very easy to understand and quickly we can understand. When it comes to the Noor and the soul is one soul, one Noor there is not two soul there is no noor born from the other noor the noor is the noor and noor is the noor one single noor that's what we call noor -e mujarad and that noor -e mujarad is in the imam and the spark of the noor is in us that's ruhe ilahi the nafsun waida is the imam and we are the sun ray the copies of that Imam so in that case physically we were all born even Imam was born and he has children but when it comes to the Noor is one and one only no one was begotten from him 
and no one beget him. So that was easy for us to understand at the level of Nur and at the level of Batin. Okay, the last part. And there is no one like him. No one is like him. To understand this part, we should remember one of the Ginan part. Chare chare jugma fari fari joyu tere tole koi na ave. Peter says, <coughs> I went around and I checked all four levels and I was not able to find anyone equivalent to you. I'm not talking about four jokes in the Hindu mythology. This is Smiley Pierce. Because the language and the terms and the terminologies that we understood 600 years ago when we were becoming Smileys, Koja, Imam, the peer had given us the example of something, a term that we would understand. So let's analyze this part of the Ginan. Chare Chare Jugma. What are these four stages? Alame Nasut, the universe of human. The world of human. Alame Malkut, the universe of angels. Alame Jabrut, the universe of the four arch angels. Alame Lahut, the oneness of God. If you understood these four steps, the universe. Then let me explain what does it mean that there was there is no one like him. So listen to it very careful because there are things that will require your undivided attention. First, first, we need to understand if Peer is telling us then he has visited, he has looked into the four steps, four universe. And these four universe are the human, the angels, the Jabrut, archangels, and Lahut, the oneness of God, the nur and mujarrat Tell me, how elevated this peer was. See, normally we are when we are listening to the Ginan, we are too busy with the words and the sound and not giving enough credit to our peer's elevation. How elevated this peer was. that he had visited the entire world of human. He was only living in one small town somewhere in India probably. But he's saying, I went the, through the entire universe of human, entire world of the human, and then I went to the entire world of the angels, and then I went to the world of Jabrut, the world of four archangels, and I even visited Lahut. You know what Peter Zab is saying? He went to the Mirage. Did we ever understand this Ginan? Did we ever connect to this Ginan? How elevated our peers were? He went on Mirage. He went to the Lahut. And then, now, 
comes the punchline. He said, I could not find anyone comparable to you. I could not find a single human, single human, from the time of Adam to time today, when he was writing this Gnan. I could not find a single human I can compare to you. No comparison. He said, then what did I do? I really wanted to understand you, Mullah. So I went to the Alame Malakut, the universe of angels. And I looked through every single angels to see is anyone comparable to my Mullah, to you, Imam. And I could not find anyone come close to you. I could not find anyone come close to you. No comparable. No comparison. Then I said, okay, maybe I'll find someone in Alam Jabrut among the four archangels Israel, Israfil, Jibrail. Mikhail and I looked there to my surprise I still could not find anyone comparable to you up to this point everyone is agreeing with me on this line what I'm about to tell you after this that's where your attention is required then peers have said I went to alam e lahud the world of oneness, the nur e mujarrad and now listen to what Peter is saying. Even there, I could not find your comparison. I could not find even the nur e mujarrad equal to you, Mullah. And you would say, Aziz sir, Aziz Ba, how can that be? Now we are talking about Allah's Noor. So, here comes the comparison. What I was saying, that when I went to Alam in Lahud, differently, I went to Miraj, and I so had the Didar of the Noor. But what was missing, that was the God's best creation, the best of the best creation, the face, the didar of the Imam. So Ya Mullah, you are the best of the best and you have the nur in you, you have the body and you have the nur and you are complete for me because at the Alam al I found the Noor but I did not find you your desire so when I see you and when I see the Noor in you the same Noor Elahi now there is no comparison because you have the best of the best the human creation the best of the best and the Noor e Mujarrat, the highest Noor, Noor in the Lahut that I found. Even at that place, I did not find comparison. Chare, chare, jugma, fari, fari, joyu. Tere tole koi na ave mere mola. Now, when you will read, you when you recite, this part of dua the love of the Imam will pour into your heart because we are the, those fortunate souls which have found the best of the best the nur e mujarrat and nur e mujassam both in one imam -e zaman Going further into the dua, 
اللهم بحكيم محمد المصطفى ولين المرتضى وفاطمة الزهراء والحسني والحسيني and then of course we are making asking for intermediary for the sake of for the sake of Muhammad Mustafa the highest Ali Yunan Murtaza the closest Fatima Tulzara the purest and the Imam Hassan and Imam Hussain for sake of them and then of course we decide Allahumma biyaki and in the wasa for the sake of Mulana Ali, Mulana Hussain and we decide all of the names of the Imam in Quran there are many ayat but especially Surah 7 Surah Araf ayat number 180 and there are other three references in Quran because sometimes I have a hard question from our brother and sister in our Jamaat. Why do we recite Imam's name again and again and again and again? Because that is the command, the Amr, the Farman that Allah says, Remind me by my beautiful name. And Allah's beautiful name amongst us are the names of the Imam that is again Surah 7 ayat number 180 and there are three more references which I'm sure our young friends are sharing as we speak okay the other reference of we I talked about in the Ginan the face of Allah Wajayullah and that was the reference of 55 Surah Rahman ayat number 27 okay and there are other references of Wajayullah that I'm sure there are three more and friends online can share with everyone but those are the main uh, primary references that I had talked about uh, in this uh, Doha part okay so let's come to the end of Dua 6. After having recited all of the beautiful name, the beautiful Asma Usna, we come to Imam Aka Sultan Muhammad Shah. Wabi Haki Molana Imam in Al Hazril Mojud. And we already understand the importance of Hazril Mojud. Al Hayyul Kayyum, the present and living, the principle, fundamental principle of Ismaili Tariqa, the living and present Imam. Bari Haki Molana Imam Al Hazrul Mojud, Shah Karim Al Husseini, Rahman, or Gafrilna Al Rahmano, or Gafrilna Inna Kalla Kuli Shain Kadir that you are the one who is merciful you can forgive our sin and definitely indeed you can do that <coughs> let me <coughs> talk about the end of our dua walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen the beauty the beauty of our dua is that we start with Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen and we end our dua with Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen all the praises are due to Rabbil Alameen <coughs> excuse me all the praises are due to Rabbil Alameen that's how we start our dua and that's how we end our dua with the praise of the Rabbul Alameen and we all remember what Imam Jafar Sadiq has said about Rahmatul Alameen or Rabbul Alameen Mullah has said we Imams are Rabbul Alameen 
the nourisher of the personal world the human and then we do shadidar shadidar only single point i like to mention here because we all already know this part just as a reminder when we are looking at each other when we are doing shadidar what we are saying and what our action should be when we look at the person right of us the left of us we are saying oh my brother or oh my sister i see imams didar in you this far we all understand this so i'm going to go one step further than that when we look at each other and we supposed to be looking into their eyes and in their eyes what do you see you actually are reflected you are yourself is reflected in the their eyes the person you are giving shadidar to shadidar i see in you and i see in your eyes my own reflection and i see the single soul the didar of the imam in you and i know the didar of imam is in me in myself there is the nur and there is the soul of the imam in you and me shajidar shajidar put some emotion into shajidar don't just uh, mechanically automatically without giving second thought give shajidar that's the time of reflection there's a time of didar there's a time of believe that imam's nur imam soul is in you my brother and sister and imam soul and nur is in me and i see my reflection in your eyes and therefore i see the reflection of the imam in your eyes allahumma lak sujudi wa taati so here we will end uh we can open the floor for questioning if you have any question thank you very much everybody it was really nice to have all of you the momineens who have given their time during the six part the meaning of the dua throughout the weeks and we truly appreciate everyone and all of the question that we have received during this six uh part dua meaning sessions ji bismillah so if there are no question kamre sahib and i have taken over an hour today so if there is no question of course they can always send a uh, individual question to you or myself if they have any otherwise uh, we will stop here again may molai zaman bless everyone and give us tawfiq taid himmat wa yari to understand the meaning of our dua to give us the courage to receive and understand this ilm so when we recite the dua we can truly connect with imam e zaman bahut nawazish everybody thank you yaari madad yaari madad Yali madad, yali madad to everyone. Yali madad, yali madad.